My name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 30. Day number 30, we are on page number 96, the very first problem on page number 96. Number 140, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problem to you, and I'm going to get out of the frame. You're going to do it yourself, you know the routine, and then we'll compare your work against the work we're going to do together. Here's the problem. It's a very straightforward, simple problem. Here's what we are told. We are told that we have a firm which has 161 employees. 161 employees, and we are given the age distribution of the employees of this firm we are told that the age distribution is as follows. People who are under 20, people who are in their 20s, people who are in their 30s, in their 40s, and so on and so forth. And here is the distribution. We are told that there are 29 employees in this firm out of 161 who are under 20, 20 years, younger than 20 years. We have 58 people who are in their 20s, 36 people who are in their 30s, 21 people who are in their 40s. We are told there are 10 people in the 50s, five people in the 60s and we have two people apparently who are veritable geezers. Go ahead, do it yourself. The question simply is this. The question simply is what's the median? Median falls in which of these range here? Median of median age for this firm falls where? Well let's see what we can do. There is a reason why there are 161 people and not 160. There are 161 people, which means if you were to divide into half, we'll have 80 people on this side, and then we have 81st, and then we have 80 more people on this side. This 81st reading, this 81st reading is what we're trying to locate. Where does the 81st reading fall? And that's where the median is. That's, that's the range for the median. Question was, median falls in which range? There we find out. Let's figure out. We'll try to look at 81st. 29 plus 58. I think we're done. 29 plus 58. That's almost 30. That's almost... We don't even have to do this thing. This is... The adding is not necessary. You should be able to see right away. The 81st is going to fall in this range here. Because this is almost 30. This is almost 60. We are at 90. 6, 16, 17, 1, 87. There you go which means the very last person in this range is the 87th person. We are looking, they try to locate the 81st person. The 81st person falls in this region. The answer is the median falls in the 20s. The median falls in the 20s. And this is how the answers are laid out in the, in the, in the book. The question was, where does the median fall? And this median falls in the 20s. This is how this is how we speak, but this is how it's presented in the book. Median is somewhere between 20 and 20 and 29. That's all. That's the answer choice. Among all the answer choices, that's what you want to pick. It falls in the 20s. Let's do the next one. We are told, number 141, we are told that K and N are positive integers. They are positive integers. We are further told that N is more than K. And here is what we want to find out. K factorial plus N minus K times K minus 1 factorial. And here is what we are being asked. We are simply being asked to simplify this expression. Don't worry about the fact that I am sloppy. I am always, always sloppy. Sometimes I write a small k. Sometimes all of a sudden it appears as a big k. It's not a big deal. It's the same thing. Obviously in the book it is not like that. We are being asked to simplify it. Go ahead. Do it yourself. Let's see what we can do. 
The very first thing that we need to understand here is the way it is written out here. For example, let me give you a simple example. Let's start with something simple. 3 times 4 factorial, when it's written like this, so let's, let's write on this side here. 3 times 4 factorial, so when it's written like this, this is a very different animal than this. 3 times 4 with the parentheses around it. Those are two very different quantities, very two different very animals, two, two, two very different animals. This is 12 factorial. That is not what we're dealing here. What we're dealing with here is this. Is we take four, figure out what four factorials is, and whatever the answer is, you multiply by three. The only difference is that in the book, in the exam, instead of putting a multiplication sign to annoy you, they put a dot, a big dot. Actually, a dot is huge and it's dark. But that's what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with that. That's the first thing we must understand exactly what is given to us. Uh, number 141, I'm going to look at one more time exactly. Yes, they put a dot in the middle. They make it dark, they make it large. That's what that is. Let's, let's begin. So we just have to simplify it. Let's start the process. We have a k minus 1 factorial here. We have a k factorial here. So if, we, if we can somehow make this thing k minus 1, that would make life very sweet. Let's do that. 6 factorials obviously can be written as 6 times 5 factorials. Obviously, why not? That's what we're going to do. Instead of writing k factorials, we're going to write it as k times k minus 1 factorial. Just like here. 6 factorials can be written as 6 times 6 factorials can be written as 6 times 6 minus 1 factorial. That's exactly what we did here. 6 minus 1 factorial will give us 5 factorial. So 6 times 5 factorial is the same as 6 factorial. That's what does is. And now we're going now we're getting someplace. Now we're getting someplace because now we have some quantity that is common in both of these products. And the common quantity is this. K minus 1 factorial. Let's take it out. K minus 1 factorial. So if we take it out common. If we take it out common, then what we are left on this side, on this side here, we took this out common, we are just left with k. And once we take this guy out common, what we are left here is this guy. This is what is left. What do you know? Once we open this parenthesis, as you can see, k drops out. And what we are left with is n times k minus 1 factorial. That's the simplified version of what is given to us originally. This is about as, about as simplified as, can, as it can get. We cannot simplify any further. That's about it. Let's do 143. 142 rather. 142. 142 is a very straightforward, simple problem. Here's what is told. Here's what is, what is told to us. We are told that R is 4 inches, 4 inches taller than A. We are further told that B is 1 inch taller than R. We are told that if B is 65 inches tall, if B is 65 inches tall, then here is the question. Very simple, very straightforward. If B is 65 inches tall, then the question is, what is the median height? What is the median height of these three people? That's all. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's begin, shall we? So we have R, we have B. Let's, let's go in order. We have R and A. We're going to compare them first. R and A. And then we have a B. Let's see what we know. We know B is 65. That is given to us. And the first statement tells us that the R is 4 inch taller than A. 4 inch taller than A. Well, that's not, that doesn't help much. Let's, let's go to this guy then. B is 1 inch taller than R. B is 1 inch taller than R which means R must be 64. If B is 1 inch taller than R, R must be 64. 
Now let's move on to the A, the first segment. We are told that R is four inch, four inch taller than A. If R is four inch, if R is four inch taller than A, A must be sixty. There we go. We have the three heights. All we have to do is arrange them from smallest to largest. Sixty, sixty-four, and sixty-five. There is your median. The median is this. Oh Jesus Christ! I can't believe I blew it. Sixty, sixty-four. 60, 64, and 65. That's, that guy is the median. Median height, median height of the three people is 64 inches. That was the end of the first column there on page number 96. I'm going to, I'm not going to start a new column right now. We can call it a day. We'll meet again tomorrow and do the three problems that you see in the next column. Alright? I know.